takes <laughs> if out. you take anything from this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> it like rinses out all the good juices and stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Marilyn. I never thought I would be a, a douche expert in, <laughs> in this regard. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> I'm crying. Oh, no. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Brie Bagwell, and this is my podcast, Only Vans, where I talk to my friends in my van. Not that I want to cuss, but can we say cuss? Yeah, you can cuss. Okay. (laughs) We had that talk early on, and then we thought about just saying, like, like putting like Marilyn Bagwell filter over it or like, sorry, mom, like over it yeah. and bleeping it out. And then we thought like, it hasn't been enough. Like there might be like an occasional, yeah, F or and, or but it's like, sometimes you just really need like a well-placed cuss word and that's yeah. like totally fine. Yeah, you're right. And mom, I think mom would agree with it. that. Or if, if you have to, you can go beep, you know, it's cool. Right. Beep sorry, out. mom. So it's like, we've kind of just been like BSing a bit like beforehand. So are we, are we good? Ka? Well, uh, I'm I'm just first of all surprised that you're here because uh, you've been editing my video f- and you've just been staring at my face constantly for yeah, days. I literally like left my house editing your video all morning and here I am. Yeah, you're like if I <laughs> have you. to hear that song one more no, I love time. It. I love it. It's a great song. It's a good thing. It's a good song. Thanks. Well, thanks for doing the video. I don't know how you edit. I've seen you do it like. You sit there like a madman and yeah. you just edit your life. It's fun away. when I, it's fun when there's great footage and Luke shot it beautifully so like sometimes if I gotta edit something and I'm not happy with the footage then yeah then it's not fun yeah well thanks for being here um it's early for both of us you have a gig today I don't yeah tonight yeah, I'm, I'm so jealous like cause I I wanna be off I feel like when you're you know how, does it just me or like when you're off you feel like you're playing hooky I feel like I'm on vacation <laughs> um Kyle's driving I'm drinking champagne <laughs> like right now so yeah. you know yeah, it feels like it feels very strange. My bass player is getting married tomorrow. So Look what I'm doing! I'm Isn't that funny? That, that feels <laughs> that feels good to me. I stick in my hand. I'm gonna try the it. Cup holder there. Okay. I don't know why does that feel good. I don't think it feels good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right. Um, first things first. How many heart attacks have you had, and do you plan to have any more? <laughs> I hope not. Uh, I've had one, but I've. This sounds terrible, and I'm not proud of it, but I've OD'd twice, had one heart attack, got run over by a car. Uh, I think that's about it. You're a cat. For now. You're basically a cat. <laughs> so I have, like, what, five less lives left? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I feel like I was still here for a reason, so I had, uh, after my heart attack, I, I wouldn't have had, if I would have, if that, I wouldn't have made that, that survived that, I wouldn't have had kids I wouldn't have, that, that are awesome. I wouldn't have Brody Lane. I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here. Right. You're here for this podcast. <laughs> That's right. That's why. That's why After I you made leave it. here, it's all bets are off. Yeah. All bets, yeah. <laughs> I'm here to be sitting in the parking lot at Bucks. <laughs> we both have shows here somewhere down our near future. I don't know if we're going to just wait it out. Reckless Kelly's playing tomorrow for tonight. Are they playing in Tom- tonight? What day? What okay. day is it? That's tomorrow, okay, I think. It's tomorrow, yeah. Um, but we're not sure when this podcast is, is airing. It might air in like 2028. So okay. <laughs> we're, we're not going to mislead everybody watching or listening. Yeah, um, no, Re- Reckless Kelly will be broken up by then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'll be real sad if that's true. I'm just kidding. Um, so, and also my next question was, um, will you tell us all where the Fountain of Youth is? Because it's almost your birthday yeah. and you're like actually 70, 85. 72. I was going to say 72, <laughs> but... But you look 25, and I don't understand uh, how you do it. I don't know. You look good, too. Hey, thanks. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, we look, we look, we look all right. I think we look good. It's a lot of pressure to, like... You know, like, I didn't think, like, because I feel like my age, but, like, I don't... Like, when people are like, oh, you look young, blah, blah, and I'm like, oh, they're just being nice, but, like... And I say this lovingly, if anybody from my high school is listening, go to your go to your 20 your reun- high school reunion like don't 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 skip out on that or the 25 because one you get to catch up with all these beautiful folks that you grew up with but two you really get to see man it just like all these hot girls that i used to date <laughs> they're like have mustaches now and they're 
and their boobs are down like to their, <laughs> their belt and stuff. They're like, hi, this girl, I love her. My, my high school girlfriend, her name was Beep. And uh, the only reason I dated her was because my friends were like, dude, Beep has a crush on you. And she's got, the, she and just her thing was like she had the biggest boobs in, in high school. So they were like, you got to date her. She has like, you got to date her because you have to tell us. You know, we have to live vicariously. So you have to tell us, like, what are, what those are about. It's before the internet. Yes. So there was no OnlyFans or anything like that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so, yeah, I dated her, and they were everything that they were cracked up to be. <laughs> and uh, but and she was really hot, and I think we broke up because we'd been dating for, like, three months, and we only got to third base, and I was like, mm, I can't do that. So, uh, but anyway, I saw her at the reunion, and she, I didn't even notice her. She had, like, a mustache, and... And uh, she yeah. was not like, and those big old knockers were, uh, they, yeah, they, they were uh, still big, but not they're big, in yeah. the same. Yeah, like place. basically, like just taking, trying to think how to explain it, like <laughs> a large sock with about five tennis balls in it. <laughs> Great. I hope she doesn't listen My, to this podcast. You can edit this out. <laughs> 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 I do think it's funny though because aging to me like I see like older women that I think are incredibly beautiful yeah and like I don't do anything to myself I'm kind of a hippie but yeah I don't even know if I told you my one Botox story but I, yeah. I got <laughs> I got Botox one time from somewhere in Austin that like all of our friends recommended yeah. so I go there and like I, I got it one time and my eyes it <laughs> it made my eyes droop like the like this, oh and everyone God. thought I was sick. Everyone's yeah. like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, yeah. "Oh yeah, I have the f- the flu or something." And it was just a bad Botox job. And then all my friends are like, "It's because you didn't get enough. You got to go back. You got to get it get here, more. here, yeah. here, and then it'll lift it." Everything. And I was like, "No, I'm not doing that. I'm, I don't care I'm if afraid, people do like, it." But you know, I'm, I've thought. You know, it seems to be the norm now. So it's uh, not that I've thought about it, but like I'm I'm afraid like. I don't want to mess anything up. Like, I'm afraid I'll look funny or something. Yeah, so. I did. I looked like a cartoon character. Yeah. Uh, but No, I mean, I, I agree with you. Like, some women age real... Uh, there's, there was some other girls that were, like, in my reunion that were, like, not hot at all and kind of almost, like, gothy, going through, you know, kind of scary chicks. Like, <laughs> but then you saw them and they were, like, beautiful. You mean, like, yeah. like wow, like, what was that girl's name? Beep. She was like all goth. Nobody would talk to her. She'd like walk down the hall like in like black lipstick. Like everybody's like, Argh. people were like scared of her. And then Beep. was like banging. I was like, girl, what's up? Dang. Yeah. She was like, uh, yeah. I'm. Well, I think we're like at this point in the music business. It seems at least where I mean, when I got to Nashville, I was like 24. I can't remember, but that was like much too old. Yeah. And now, now it's like there's all these artists that are mainstream that are not 16. Like you don't have to be 16 anymore. Yeah. You don't have to be 24 anymore. It's kind of like everyone finally got over that. Where yeah, I'm which glad is about, so I'm glad about that. Same, especially for girls, because like girls, it seemed to get be getting younger there for a while. Like yeah, if you're not. 12 you're you're too old after 12 right. you're like what you're like what i don't even yeah <laughs> yeah I i'm like writing vote. in my diary about yeah but um no i don't know where i was going with that kyle edit that out there was gonna be something funny <laughs> D- don't edit that out i just lost my train of thought i was just trying to think of what i was doing when i was 12 yeah i me too but i agree they only wanted stuff they only wanted the girl that had just won the voice that was 15 yeah. and if you weren't that girl like you were kind of screwed well I think I think with the success of like uh, there's a bunch of artists out there you know that that are older that those they're kind of um, they're all skipping my mind right now because I'm thinking about Kelly their- Clarkson beep <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Underwood <laughs> no uh, the, the, the girl the girl with all the tats oh the, Ashley McBride that girl yeah she's awesome she's amazing she's amazing so girls like her and the same thing with like Brandy Clark Brandy yeah. Carlisle Carlisle yeah they're all like so great and I think like they we love them so much because we're seeing like the mature version of them maybe they weren't maybe they were great early young but like that's why we love them like and the, Chris Stapleton who's like he kind of broke the the barrier for like men to be like you know to look like Justin Timberlake or be young right or, you know like here's this guy, big old you know, heavy bearded guy with a hat 
that's right. amazing so and I didn't know who I was like at that age. I didn't yeah. know what songs I wanted to write. And so I think I'm so glad that everyone seems to be coming around to the idea because now I'm finally like, oh, I'm in my element. Yeah. And it, I was not at 16. Do you listen to like, do you listen to like your old stuff, like your first record or second? Do you like cringe or do you go like, oh, I'm happy I made that or? I think that whose podcast is, are you interviewing me oh. now? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm totally fine with it. But I really listen to my old record for the first time in a long time because it was the it's so loud sorry guys that's okay um it was the 10 year anniversary of my first record so i went and listened to it and there was like a really sweet innocence to it because um i didn't it was before my sony deal it was before i had management it was before i had any anything i had no rules and i was just like writing songs because i love songs yeah and it made me like really emotional because i don't remember the last time that i wrote a song without thinking like is this a radio hit or like is it going to be too commercial or is it not commercial enough like what genre is this how yeah. long is it you, you know, know? that's that's true because i feel like that about our records because but at the same time when i go back and listen to those records and go that's not really very good but it's just you know but it's still very raw and right it's, it's, uh and I, I think I used to play guitar better back then. What? <laughs> oh, I think your Brody Lane record, you are playing the heck out of yeah. a guitar. Unless that's not you. No, it's me. <laughs> okay, I thought it's so. me. Just there's one or two. There's one or two songs uh, that Rob played on, our boy Rob. I love our boy Rob. Yeah. Um, and he did some great work on a couple of songs, but no, yeah. for the most part, it's me. Well, I wanted to ask you, I mean, your topic, like this this Only Vans um which I, I just bring my friends in to talk about kind of one specific topic. And that like the topic I chose for you is touring because I'm just wondering, like you, you tour in so many different ways because you have so many different bands yeah. and you've been doing this for a while. So is it like easier or harder to tour in a van with like boys who like to, they like to drink and have fun, but yeah. there's not a, like a whole lot of like drugs and rock star stuff. Like, is that easier than touring in a big bus with like a bunch of cocaine? Well, yeah, that's a little, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> a bunch. Oh my God. I think I snorted half a Peru during the nineties, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Cause going back to like what you're saying, like the record, like your first record, how that there's no it's just wild and free and there's no preconceived notion of what you're supposed to do or who you're supposed to be. Like, you know, I grew up to kiss and all my rock star watching Van Halen and watching David Lee Roth throw TVs out the window and get arrested naked. You know what I mean? Like I was like, that's so cool. You know, my mom and dad would be like, loser. But me and my brothers were like, oh, he's so awesome. Or, or when I'd look up to somebody, be like, wow, he's on heroin. That's so cool. He looks like he's about to die. He's freaking awesome. Like, that's I don't know why kids like that stuff even to this day but like so getting on a bus when we were on Sony and traveling the world and you know everything that you saw growing up of your heroes is happening to you like just so many girls like our crew guys would have you know backstage passes and I would it got to the point to where which I got this from David Lee Roth is that you know we would give out backstage passes to our crew guys to go give to the girls to get them on the bus and i would uh to get you know to get the quality of the girls up because for a while there was you know you get in some of the small towns it gets a little <laughs> squirrely but i would put uh i would put um you know their names on the passes on in a marker on the back of the passes and give them to them and whoever brought like the hottest girl i would look at the pass and give them 100 bucks for incentive Incentive and, to bring the hot. Yeah. Wow. So that I would do that, and then that's how we kind of upped our quality. I know this sounds terrible. <laughs> for me, it would be like, who can find the best dog sitter, <laughs> or who takes my dog for the longest walk? Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. So, but so that was kind of being in that whole. That's kind of all I knew, and it wasn't just. All, I don't want to make it sound like it was all about groupies or all that, but. That whole lifestyle is everything they say it is. And so to say versus the van now, just, you know, we sit around and drink and we don't really do drugs like that anymore. But, uh, you know, you get, not that it's boring, but, you know, it's like van, get in the van, stop at Bucky's, drive six, seven, eight hours, play your gig, go to your hotel. Right. Eat crappy continental breakfast and wake up and get in the van and do it again. It's like, 
I mean, it's let's not, be honest. It's not super rock star. It's I not agree. super rock star. Does it. And do we st- do we have cool after parties in our hotels? Yeah, we still do rock star stuff like that. But like, it's just something about doing a mountain of blow with Polly Shore on a stripper's butt. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm I'm glad that you got to do that, and then I get to like live through you. <laughs> Um, I've heard a lot of like the best stories, but, but um, I agree. It's like, it's, um, it's super, it's super hard to maintain that lifestyle in a van. Yeah. Cause it's exhausting. Well, also then you're in a van, you're in a small confined area. So, right. you know, you got to respect, there's a little box that everybody has and you got to kind of respect that space. And, you know, then there's that kind of like that code, you not, you know, if you bring up your partner or significant other or. You know, a groupie you picked up in Memphis, like you, you know, you're kind of inconveniencing everybody else. <laughs> right? Yeah. How does that hotel room get divided up? All my guys are like married, so yeah. it's like great. It's um, except Ka, but um, yeah, that's really wonderful because that does get strange if there's like, okay, we have a hotel room and <laughs> how, I think how's now that as we older, we just kind of it's kind of just agreed that like if you bring somebody in or or your wife, whatever then you got to kind of like take care of that yourself. Yeah, that's don't that's our that rule. On, don't bring that on the band like. Right. The so. rooms that I pay for are for the band and yeah. so if your wife wants to come like that's a, that's yeah. awesome and I encourage it yes. but it just has to you have to buy your own room. Get your own room and, and that's cool. and, and I think that's just the way it should be so. Yeah, I didn't learn I learned that the hard way because one time a guy brought his girlfriend I was like, "Sure, you know, this is 10 years ago when I yeah. started my band." And then the next weekend, I had two girlfriends in the van. And then one time, we had four girlfriends in the van. And I, like, had nowhere to sleep. I had, I had no... I couldn't lay down. And I was like, okay, this has to be... Yeah. This has to be separated. And that's for everybody's, like, mental health, yeah. really. Do you think social media has ruined... Like, I, I kind of feel, too, like, I would go to some after parties. And, and then everyone's just, like, filming the whole time. It yeah. kind of, like... I'd rather just sit in the parking lot and drink in the beer moment. with my guys. <laughs> I think if social media has ruined anything, it's ruined like how we view our heroes and stars. Like, you know, there, it was there's a mystique to them. Like, Kiss or Van Halen. Like, you only saw them either on stage or on MTV. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and now, you know, if Paul Stanley is like baking a cake, I can comment literally on him baking a cake and going. Bro, you just you put too much chocolate in there. You know, like, like <laughs> there's no mystique, you know. Or you know, there's people that can just hate on them, like just that were fans all day. Like, hey, you look, you know, right. your shoes look stupid. Like, like you could, you would never say that to your rock god hero. Like back in the day, you just because the minute all you saw was them coming out, and you were just like, oh my god, and you were kind of right. reveled in that in that moment. And Paul Paul talks about that too, where he remembers getting like the Robert O'Keefe record, and and all you knew about him was the cover of this album and he was like this is the coolest guy in the world and now like you know you have to post stories and you have to what my dog that's my dog making squeakies (laughs) um you have to people they you feel like they have to really get to know you for them to follow you and pay attention all the time and then but then yeah you're right like people come to shows and they think that you're their best friend because they know everything about you it's super strange that's that is strange uh yeah or they'll ask you about something that you posted like a month ago and you're like, you didn't really mean much by it. You just kind of posted it just to post something because we're supposed to post stuff all the time. Right, right, right. And then they're really paying attention or watching or they feel like they know my kids when they see Rio. They're like, hey, they, they, they get on their knees like, hey, did you have fun? And they talk about all the stuff that I posted about her and she's right. just looking at them like. This is a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> is stranger part? danger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine if there was like Snapchat when you were like, throwing milk in the back lounge of a tour bus did yes, you yeah. all over girls like we and that was my <laughs> rest in peace my buddy jeff van zant he was our guitar tech and i don't know who or how we got we had installed a stripper pole in the back of the you know the bus the yeah. lounge i don't know and i don't know who went through the trouble of going to home depot and buying screws and i don't even think the bus driver was cool with it. I think we got charged like 500 bucks to fix the floor because they screwed like the, <laughs> they had to screw the pole into the into the bus floor and all that. But so we had these girls and you know they're you know there's champagne and they're you know they're slinging champagne and we're like we're listening to Prince and it was like yeah and everybody's got their tops off and uh, yeah and then we ran out of champagne and so Jeff Van Zant 
comes in. He's eating Oreo cookies, and he's got this gallon of milk. And he just starts slinging milk everywhere. And it was like, yeah, it was fun for 10 seconds. And then when it stopped, it, everybody was like, oh, no. It was bad We're idea. covered in dairy. And then the yeah. worst thing is, if you ever left milk laying around, we tried to clean it up, but, you know, it got in the couches and the crevices. It just smells like, after about a week, smells like baby puke. So nobody wanted to go back there. Because uh, usually during the day we would play video games and we just stopped doing it because we had to get it all kind of, God, that's such an 80s term, but I was going to say we had to douche out the back room, but that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> douche out. Yeah, I, I don't love that. Um, <laughs> not going to lie. That's not my favorite term that you've used. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Great. Uh, my ni- My 90s. Sides coming right. out. Right. And now, like, that's, like, not even good for you as a woman anymore. So no. now, like, the young girl's going to be like, what are they talking about? Yeah, that is, like... We don't yeah, know. I think you're not you're supposed to do that, right? Right. And no, it, you're not. Take it... Take, take <laughs> if you take anything from this podcast... <laughs> <laughs> it, rin- it, like, rinses out all the good juices and stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Marilyn. <laughs> I never thought I would be a... Uh, a douche expert <laughs> in this regard. Cut. <laughs> I'm crying. Oh no. Oh my god. Going back. Amazing. To, where are we go? <laughs> we gotta get out of here. No, I. Oh uh, <laughs> How? Let's go all the way back. So, so hey, Start welcome, over. welcome, AJ. Oh no, this is Bye. too much. Um, I haven't eaten and I had like half a glass of champagne. I have the, I have the giggles. <laughs> Whew. Um, but I did want to talk about, you told me back when you were on Sony, they put you on 80 tour dates in a row. Yeah. I can't, I can't even do like eight would kill my voice and my body and my, I don't know how you did that. It, uh, well, the thing was just that like, cause we were, we, when we, you know, we made the mistake of telling them like, we're, you know, we'll do anything. We're hungry, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, okay, that's good to hear. Like, so we had just gotten off the Stone Temple Pilots tour and that was about 40 dates and then in a row and then there's a band called Fuel back in the 90s they were yeah. some good friends of ours great songs uh, and we did that for about 20 dates and then here we go we were ready to go home and they were like we just got added to the Blues Travelers tour and that was another 20 dates with this Blues Travelers and Black Crows and I forget who else was on it cool it was a cool cool tour and then um, yeah so what was so funny is we are then I just I was like literally taste blood and like there was I was bleeding losing my voice, and we the funny thing is and I know this sounds kind of dumb but like we were medicating ourselves heavily and I'm not saying that we sh- that was the answer but like kind of it was the answer like that's really yeah. the only way that we could stay up or stay functional because if you just didn't do anything and try to just do it on your own even if you were a healthy person it's almost impossible to do. Um, but I'm not, so anybody that listens to this, I'm not saying don't do that. <laughs> like, don't, right. but, um, Alex, my brother was so burnt out cause he was, you know, he'd fallen in love with his wife now that he, uh, you know, is married to now and they have wonderful kids, but you know, he was trying to get a relationship and court his, this relationship. And he was the whole time you're telling your girl that you just met, that you love, like, I'll, I'll be home. I'll be home. Our tour is almost over, almost over. Like can't wait and you know they were starting to have like their first like arguments and he just like man I just want to get home and, yeah uh, so once uh, when our manager was like yeah we're gonna add these 20 dates I, he didn't even tell anybody he just like he just we were like where's that Alex and then our guitar tech was like I think he said he went to the airport oh he was like I'm <laughs> so, out of here yeah he's out of here so I we get we jump in a, there's no Uber then we jump in a yellow cab and like shoot on over to the airport and they're at we're looking around, and it was a small airport. We were in uh, Philly. I think we were in, no, we were in Baltimore. And there's Alex with his rolling suitcase. Like He's, like, walking to his gate, and we're like, hey, hey, man. We, and then somehow we talked him out of not jumping on the plane. And, uh, Jeez. We, you know, this, this, uh, so, yeah, so we, we finished the dates, and then we did tell him no more. So the crazy thing was that when I got home, this is before, like, when I was, like, single. I didn't have no kids and all that, so... I had to literally go, I tried to go home and sleep, and I couldn't sleep because it was so quiet. Oh. So I had, I, I checked into like a hotel room, like right down the road from my house, just to kind of, I, I needed like a couple of days to like 
decompress from like the road so my friends were like hey dude you're home uh, are you home i was like i am home but i'm like <laughs> at the holiday Inn down the road yeah They're like why are you there like so it took a few days for me to like kind of do that but then we went back on the road for another god during the sony years we toured probably three years straight i was home probably all of two months for three years so that's crazy because I feel like I tour a lot and that's like way more than no, it's I insane. tour. insane. It's literally like... That's insane. Forget relationships. I mean, like, I was gone so long that the girl I was dating, when I came home, I saw her at HEB with a two-year-old son that was not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's like, why. Hey, good to see you. I was like, are you babysitting or... Oh, this is my son. Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> well, there's like this big, that big article that people have been sharing about musicians like taking, you know, canceling tours for mental health reasons. Or, yeah. And that's like, that kind of was just unheard of back then, yeah. really. It's oh, like, it, was, it was totally unheard of. It was almost like if you, if you did anything, like we, even the thing with my brother Alex, we never even let the label know because if you did anything that made it sound like you were not down to promote your record, that they were taking all the money from, like, then they, then you were hard to work with or, you know, they would, you know, you just weren't, in, in their eyes, you just weren't, like, doing your part. Yeah, you're so. dispensable and they can drop you yeah. Uh, yeah, at any point. I just canceled a show because I have five in a row and the middle show, I wasn't supposed to have five in a row, but now I do, and the middle show is at a smoky bar. Oh. And so I was like, they still have those? I know they do. They have like one, and I was playing oh, it. Oh, they have one in America, uh, and you're yeah. playing it. <laughs> and I was playing it. So I mean, I canceled it because it was like it's not worth losing my voice. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just I'm a little more conscious of it after COVID. I was kind of like really running myself ragged, and I I looked. I got my old phone charged the other day, and I was like, man, I, I look really tired. Like 20, 2015 Brie it was like she looks exhausted. <laughs> yeah real puffy and I was kind of just like having a great time and eating whatever was free and I was going to say not to cut you off how's this thing doing this van yeah I don't want to even talk about this van <laughs> I have spent $20,000 this year fixing this van I'm wondering how about um yeah uh anyway yeah and we named the podcast after this yeah van. only fan only, only vans. vans but you don't have to take your clothes off unless you want to that's you a, it's your choice to take it. maybe we, we're Maybe not sponsored yet, so... 2001 AJ would have done it, but not... I know. I know. Rocking dad bod, rocking this COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't know 2001 AJ because oh. it's hard It's hard enough being your friend in, a, in the best way. Yeah. Like, we have the best time. We do. But I can't imagine having that much fun that long ago. I think we would have died. We would have died. We should not... We should. I feel like you're like... One thing I've... As through our friendship, I've recognizes you're because you and I think it's probably because or I'd like to think that it's because you are in this male dominated world you kind of like it's like hanging with a bro like you, you kind of like you can hang with the guys like you're not you know thank you do people tell you that um yeah like you can like you're not you're not like oh my god like, I mean if you need to go splash splash yourself clean like in a bathroom <laughs> like, you'll do it you're not like oh my god I can't have like you know Believe yeah, I, I have, like, you know, I can't always, like, shave my legs and my arms yeah. and stuff, just armpits and stuff. Like, I mean, the guys are kind of, like, they don't seem, like, disgusted by it. But yeah. it's, it's, I just have to live kind of like a dude sometimes, yeah. and that's just how it and has to be. We've talked about it before where you're, like, it's not fair because the guys, we just throw on, like, some pants and put on yeah. a hat, and you're, like, they look fine. I mean. I woke up like this, but <laughs> no. Yeah. It, it's the hair, it's the makeup, it's the whole deal. Touring yeah. as a guy, I mean, I, there's really... I can't imagine doing that many dates like you did as a as a female. Yeah. Just the amount of clothes and make did you wear makeup ever? Were you an eyeliner? No, person I mean I, for about five hot minutes I wore guy liner. We all did, you know, like it was because it was cool. It accentuated your eyes on stage, but uh, right. Um, no, not really. The thing I did is when I first went on my first tour, I was like, yeah, like uh, I brought this big suitcase with all these stage outfits on and and. If you're on a bus, it gets starts getting cluttered with a bunch of stuff. So, and then I just hated like, had, then you got to do, you got to think about laundry and yeah. all this crap. And like, and you know, you, you got priorities like parties and girls and all that <laughs> stuff. So you like laundry <laughs> now. So, basically, like, about two weeks in, my we were swinging through Dallas and my sister was coming up, and I was like, just take my backpack. I, I mean, just take my suitcase. I don't even need it because I was basically what I was doing is like, 
I would just have like three pants, and back then we just wore black pants. You didn't wear jeans or anything like that. You would add three pants, and I would just wash them like in a sink or wherever. If it rained, I'd just throw it outside and hang it somewhere. <laughs> like, and then I would just pe- wear people's concert shirts. Like whoever I was torn with, it was, you know, cool sh- bands. That, so, and then I would wear those and leave them in a hotel, or some chick would, you know, walk off with it. Like so, I didn't. And then on our rider, we would put, you know, clean underwear and socks. So. And then I would just, whenever I showered, I'd just leave them wherever yeah. I showered. So well, hopefully in the trash can, but maybe not. I don't know. Sometimes I, <laughs> yeah, I, that's interesting that you say that because for a whole year I got so sick of putting together outfits. Yeah. I love fashion, but I don't like the act of putting yeah. together an outfit for every show. You know, two hundred times a year, that's a lot. And so for one whole year, I only wore black shirts and I changed my jewelry and my boots. And I just wear the same black tank top and then the winter long sleeve black shirt. Nobody noticed. Yeah. And so it's like, it kind of simplified things for a minute. If anyone wants to do that, it's a great <laughs> break. Um, but we're like nearing the end. I, I I was wanting to tell some crazy road stories, but we uh, we you you already did a lot of that. Unless you have one more. Uh, that, that's about, I mean, I have so many, but I don't want to. I don't want people to leave this podcast going like, <laughs> that guy's insane. Yeah, but, uh, just but, um, climbing rafters and breaking ribs. Yeah, right. I, yeah, which I don't do any of that anymore because I have kids, so I'm trying to... Stay make, alive. Stay alive so I can go see them, you know, graduate, whatever. But um, I really want to talk about it real quick before we leave. Sure. Your record is amazing. Oh, stop it. Yes. I, I'm blown away because I remember you were calling us, uh, you know, showing friends of ours, Mark and Cassie, and I was just going like, what do you think? Is my record... I, I, I'm, I, I don't know if it's like... I just wrote a bunch, I recorded a bunch of songs I like writing, or that I love, and didn't really think about mainstream or anything like that, and when we heard it, I was like, you've arrived, so. Thank you, it's a very songwritery record, Yeah. and I think people that are not songwriters, I was like, they're not going to get it, but people have been really responding well, so yeah. I'm so thankful. And That's what I feel like, I mean, mine's going to be, a, mine's a little Darker. I was just gonna say, like, and yours is gonna be out soon, your new yes. one, and it's a dark record, and I can't wait. Yeah, it's dark because you know my mom passed last year, and uh, just you know the pandemic, and I was just going through a lot of changing times and stuff. But I, the cool what thing about when you turn eighty two, that's right. <laughs> the cool thing is, I, it was almost like very therapeutic to get it off my chest because now I'm already writing, a, you know, the next record, and it's like happier and like where I'm at now. So I feel like I had to get that out of my system and I think songwriting is cool for that totally and you should be allowed to make the art that you want to make and yes. I'm glad and you also produce and direct and have 55 bands <laughs> and well, now I'll just have three just Vallejo Love and Chaos I got rid of the, I'm not doing the Prince thing anymore and I'm not doing uh, like South Town or that anymore so okay now I just have three just three only three bands uh, only three bands <laughs> and making music videos f- for me yes and producing making, on your spare time. Right, make three bands and making music videos for Brie Bay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we, I just, just so everybody knows, we had like a really cool moment where we got to like live together. Yeah. Kind of. And uh, it was so much fun because you were like doing music videos for me and I was like, you can have this room. And we just like <laughs> built, we made the most amazing videos during that yeah, time. And so I now, wish, yeah. I wish we would have, like if TikTok would have been around, it would have been insane. Yeah, we would, one time AJ brought home uh, roller skates at like 2 in the morning and we roller skated all through my art apartment and I went to like propel myself forward and I grabbed the freezer handle so I could like propel myself forward and I pulled and the freezer opened and I just ate it. it was, I mean the I, neighbors I downstairs to video. had to hate us like they were just like, <laughs> it just, oh, can you imagine what it sounded like down there? I'm not proud of it because <laughs> now in my old age I'm like, oh, you kids upstairs. We have that video somewhere. We gotta find. We gotta it. find it. We gotta find it. Um, but I'm so excited for a new project coming out. Yeah. And Jordy Lee's great. I love you guys. I love that band. Yeah. So. I love you too. Um, whiskey. And whiskey's here. Sorry, she was screaming. She's like, um, oh, we're at. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, uh, how long is this podcast? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yay. And I love you. Everyone follow AJ Vallejo and all of his yeah, just Google three me. bands on there. Yeah. And we got a new video coming out together very soon. Yes, it's going to be great. It'd be, it's probably going to already be out by the time. Yes, right. Whatever. Okay. Your new album will be out. Yeah. And can you say thanks, Kyle, in the software? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you.